about to run 20, 21k. Woo! Not the worst thing I've ever done, but the, the hardest thing. Good morning! It is half nine. All of a sudden, I'm really, really, really excited. I can't wait to take this off. I I think it's gonna be great. I don't know why I'm so excited all of a sudden. Um, it is currently half six. I had my alarm set for half six, but I woke up at like five past. And I was like, do you know what? I'm not gonna bother going back to sleep. Um, I'll go and get my big cup of electrolytes that I planned on drinking and like just start drinking them so that when I start the race at half nine, I don't really, really, really need to wait. I was like, I'll get up and just start drinking them now. I had a good night's sleep. It felt very on and off. Felt like I, wake, I woke up a lot, but I probably didn't. I just had a lot of crazy dreams. Dreams where it was like, we went and did this half marathon and my coach was there. But there was parts where I had to like, one girl was like, they don't want you how hilly it is because that's what people say about this half marathon. So I think that was, must have been in my head subconsciously. But we like hiked up a waterfall. And then I had another dream where my parents didn't, because my parents are going to come to my flat now at like 7am so they can eat breakfast here rather than like paying for it at the hotel and stuff like I bought food for us. So they're going to come here at 7 so we can eat breakfast. But I had a dream they didn't turn up until like 3pm and I completely missed the race. <laughs> Half marathon day. I have some questions for you guys that I'm going to do a bit of a QA and a with. I'm about to run 20, 21k. A half marathon. Part of me is like, that's crazy shit, but I'm so used to seeing people run 20k's on TikTok these days. <laughs> but it doesn't make it any less sick for me. Why do I feel like my mum's going to cry? I'll probably cry, to be honest. I haven't vlogged anything, I forgot my camera, and I forgot my bottle. <laughs> I feel sick. <laughs> and it's really sunny. And there's not that many people. I'm going to put my hand down there. What time is it? 10 past 10, 10 past 9. Oh my god, I feel physically sick. Is that comfortable? Is that okay? Yeah, I feel sick. Is that you? I feel well and truly sick. Yeah. It's only running. And you know what? I don't know why. I just think, for a time, I can go by this time, whatever today, it's all be over. I know, and I know I can do it. I just don't know why I literally feel ill. The route can start. You've got 20 seconds for that simple race as well. So do that before you go home. thing I've ever done but the the hardest thing ever which was really annoying because it shouldn't have been but it was so hot and the hill was vile <laughs> vile like disgusting yeah that came out and walked the wrong bloody way didn't it yeah what did the point you came from there yeah. <laughs> what do you guys you have no sense of direction Ugh, I really shouldn't stop Moving. <laughs> yes. Woo! If you're gonna do your first half marathon, under no circumstance do it in this park. You didn't put you off doing another one. Do though. not do it in this park. Now that I've seen my time, no. That right that rap <laughs> basically there was one lap that they missed me because they thought I hadn't come through yet. But to be fair, I did it quite quickly. 
<laughs> I just cr kept crying on that lap. No, because I was like, I was just really annoyed at myself because I was like, oh, I've been really slow. Like, I've walked, I haven't even done 17k yet, and I've walked, I've run more than this in training runs, but the whole thing was literally hill. It was so hard and boring because it was to be fair it wasn't that boring because it was four laps it's because you know every lap you're coming to that hill whereas if you didn't know i don't Everybody think it would get in your finished. head so much do you know what i mean if you did like a lap say and there was one coming you wouldn't know but because you knew it was there it was mentally draining <laughs> i don't know if that young kid's finished yet Stop, i stopped for a week twice well that's what i thought i was on my first on my first lap i was desperate for a wee and then I ran past the toilets and I was like it's gonna take you max 40 seconds to wee just wee otherwise you're just not gonna stop thinking about it hello it is the next day I said yesterday I would do this Q&A before I left and then I literally I didn't forget to be fair my parents turned up like 20 minutes earlier to my flat than they said they would yes it's the next day and I'm sorry for the lack of footage yesterday I as you can imagine had something else on my mind and I did not get my own camera out once when I was going around on the race. Honestly, my boyfriend's still here and he's probably absolutely sick of me of me saying this. Hardest thing <laughs> I've ever done in my life. I can't remember what I said in the clip afterwards. I literally cried on the third lap on the way around because I was like, this is the worst half marathon I probably could have signed up for. Like it was worst case scenario in all cases. But, nonetheless, doesn't matter. Why was it really tricky? <laughs> really hilly. You may as well tell everyone. It was really hilly. I've already said this, I think, yesterday. I'm assuming I said this straight after the race. It was pure hill. 300 metres of elevation. That is crazy. Uh, especially for your first. So that was a bit of a shock to the system. So, in all honesty, I actually... The reason I was crying on lap three was because I was really, 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 like, pissed off. Because I was just like... I've trained so hard for this and I've turned up and it is like the toughest route it like could have been and it was so sunny and I was just getting really frustrated at like myself and the route I think so I was like in my head I thought I was going a lot slower than I was and I was like this is gonna take me like three hours this is embarrassing like this is so hard and I was like I was just frustrated but then it actually didn't it took me I also weed twice and I did in fact pause my Strava while I weed. So my official time was 2.40 and I literally said on the lead up, if it takes me 2.40, I'm going to be pissed off at myself. But I thought I was saying that thinking it was going to be super flat. So I'm happy with the, the time nonetheless. My like time when I paused because I weed twice <laughs> was 2.38. And yeah, anyway, the questions aren't necessarily going to be about yesterday, but I get so many questions in DMs about you guys about like starting running and what I did and if I had a coach and if I did this and what I'd recommend and rah, 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 rah. So I thought if I just put it all in this video with alongside the vlog, anyone asks me in the future, I can just point them in the direction of this vid. So someone said, where's your running vest from? I've actually linked it before on my Instagram, but I'll link it down below. This was the only vest I could find. Who knew running vests were like upwards of like 60 quid up to like a hundred pound. This was the only vest I could find that fit a iPhone max in like the bigger size this was the only vest under, I didn't want to pay more than £30. <laughs> this was the only vest I found that fit it in. But there's also another one from Amazon that I'll link down below, which is really good if you've got a normal iPhone. I ordered it before. It fit all of my bits in it, like my water bottle, my sweet blah, 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 but it didn't fit my phone. So I'll leave two down below, but they're both £30. <laughs> Someone said, how do you control your breathing when you're outside running? I'm rubbish. I am also super rubbish. <laughs> I, I naturally breathe into my chest a lot so i if i feel like i'm really struggling i will quite literally put my hand on my stomach and check if i'm breathing into my stomach and it was really really hard at first but if i'm struggling or if i'm getting bored or if something if it just feels a bit hard at some points i will try i'm pretty sure when you're running yours as well i don't really know what i'm talking about when it comes to any of this but that's i feel like the whole point i'm gonna tell you from a a very 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 beginner standpoint some things that help me but i'm pretty sure when you're running you're supposed to only really try and breathe in and out of your nose that's quite impossible <laughs> most of the time but 
once I got a bit fitter and felt right, like comfortable running, like the running aspect didn't feel that hard, I would try and concentrate on that. And in the moment that feels really, really difficult, but it actually it helps. It's really weird because the actual act of it feels hard. Like it feels hard to, like you feel like you're out of breath, but after you do it for like a minute, it's actually extremely helpful. So I don't really have a how. A lot of things are like this, like how do I, someone said, how do I keep going? I find myself keep wanting to stop after a few minutes. You literally, <laughs> you just have to. <laughs> For me, the biggest thing is I get bored, especially on longer runs. So I think, I've said this before, I've made a whole TikTok about it, is switching up what I'm listening to. And I was actually really, really bad at doing that yesterday. I set off and within like the first half of the first lap, I was like, I need music. And then I listened to a big playlist that you guys on my Instagram made. I'll, make, I'll link a playlist down below. I made everybody on my Instagram, like put their absolute favorite song on it. So it's like 25 hours long of like everybody's favorite bangers. And that got me through, I would say like maybe like a lap and a half. And then I got frustrated. I took out my earphones completely. And then I just started getting really flustered. And then I put on like my running SOS playlist that was like my five songs that without a doubt would make me smile. They didn't, nothing was working. And then I got rid of them again. And then I tried to put on the girls bathroom and I was very, very in my head yesterday. But my, my normal plan is podcast, sweets, switch to music. And then if I'm in a really long run, I'll stop listening to anything at all. And then I'll put on like my five favorite songs at the end. That's normally, what I do yesterday, that literally went out the window. I don't know why, I just couldn't think about anything. <laughs> I think for me, the thing that made me keep going when I wanted to stop was obviously that I had a race. Like I didn't really, not I didn't have a choice, because obviously you kind of do, but knowing that I was training for something kind of meant you had to push through. Like my coach always said, like every run you miss now is gonna make the race day a little bit harder. Like every single run you risk, you're just like making race day harder and harder and harder. So I would book a race, even if it's a 5K, 10K, half marathon, full marathon, wh whatever it is you wanna do, book a race. And if you wanna stop after like a minute, it's probably cause you're just going too fast. Like you're just setting off too fast and you're making yourself out of breath, like slow down. Who said you had to run the whole things? Like when you're starting training, you don't have to run the whole thing if you can't. Like who, I said that to myself so much yesterday. Like when I, stop, when I wanted to stop for a wee, I was like, oh my God, I can't. And I was like, why not? <laughs> who for? For a time? For a time for who? For people on your Strava? For people to look at afterwards, for you to post on Instagram? I was like, if you need a wee, just stop and have a wee. <laughs> or if you need to like stop when you're out on your first few training runs, like why, why would you not? It's better to stop and walk than to like, starts just hate running because it feels so, so hard. A lot of people say, how long have I been training for? I started technically training, not technically, I started at the very, very beginning of the year, but then I had like a month, like the whole of March really, I did like two runs because I had to stop running because of my shin splints. But my training was supposed to be Jan, Feb, March, April, four months, which is what, 16 weeks? We didn't end up being 16 weeks. But yeah, I only started running at the beginning of the year. And when I say I could not even run, my first proper run on my training plan was a 4K. And I think I walked like half a K of it. I literally could not get through a 4K. A lot of people always ask me favorite trainers because I've said like, oh, if you're having shoes, please change your shoes. But I'm not gonna tell you what shoes I run in because I actually think it's extremely unhelpful because just because I like them doesn't mean you're gonna like them. So my advice is go to like a run, try and go to like a running store. If you have an up and running near you, I know that's a chain. That's where I went. You can actually try on all the shoes. You can run on a treadmill. And the guy said to me before, he was like, you'll know when you put the trainer on. And I was like, I won't know. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I've never run before. I've never tried on a pair of trainers before. He was like, trust me, you'll kind of know. And then at the end, two of like the six, I was like, oh, it's in between these two. I put one on each foot, got on the treadmill, ran. So I'm not going to tell you what I run in because I just think it's extremely unhelpful because just because it works for me, literally you could absolutely hate them. Like the trainers I had before, a lot of people love and they're literally what ruined my shins. So like, there's no use telling you, but my advice is go to someone who actually does know what they're talking about and just try a bunch on and don't be nervous either. I literally turned up after a spray tan, stinking of tan, I had no bra on, <laughs> a baggy t-shirt and I was running on this treadmill and like, who cares? I can't stop getting stitches no matter what, ever struggled with them. Yes, at the very, very beginning, again, breathe through the nose, 
into the stomach and maybe it's what you're eating or how how like long you're leaving before eating i know some people like can who is it that i follow always said they used to eat like a bagel and butter before and no matter how long before they had it it just gave them a stitch like the butter just gave them a stitch even if it was like two hours before so try all different foods before also i think they naturally go as you running is great because you naturally get very like a lot better a lot quicker and for me after the first like maybe three four weeks they kind of just of three runs a week a lot of people asking that as well I, i've always done three runs a week i always had a coach but i know a lot of people love the runner app but even if you don't want to pay for that i think it's like seven pound a week maybe if you don't want to pay for that just aim for one short one medium one long run maybe a pace run medium run and a long run depending on what your goals are so yeah after like three weeks of three runs a week mine kind of just went although yesterday i got bad stitch before i was gonna throw up uh, 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 uh how long were we run at the beginning 3k 3k a pace run that i ended up stopped doing because it gave me shin splints and a 5k was what, all i did all january and then it started being like five seven pace run then we got rid of the pace runs and then we moved on to like time so it was like 45 minutes an hour 45 minutes an hour and 15 hour and a half hour and 45 50 minutes like progress like that is there a point where you actually start to enjoy it? The point where like you don't feel like you're gonna throw up and die anymore on a 5K, you'll start to enjoy it, <laughs> promise. I also think personally, I enjoy long, I hate 5Ks. I don't even love a 7K. I can't like settle into it. I hate the first 5K of every single run. So going on 5K, I don't really enjoy because you don't really have time to settle into it. And I'm not a fast runner, so it's not like I can just be like, yeah, like work on pace, like get really excited about getting a good time. Like I'm not quick, so I don't enjoy <laughs> short distances. I'd rather like listen to a podcast, settle into a long run. You get to eat some sweets. So I think once you stick in it for long enough and you find the type of runs you do enjoy, like maybe you'll love a pace run. You get a buzz out of like running really fast for like a K or for a few minutes or for 800 meters. Like, however it's going to work that might be your type of thing i think you just need to play around with it a little bit <laughs> someone said i signed up for a marathon next year and i can just about run five kilometers help because this is your fault <laughs> i have also actually secret put my name in for the london marathon <laughs> next year when i was running around yesterday i was like there's not a fucking chance but we'll see also, I'm in a lot of pain today, guys. I'm a broken woman. My knee is so fucking sore. I've literally just taken two paracetamol. How to get comfortable running in public. My, <laughs> the main thing I always used to think, say if I was on like my first 4K and I was running really slow or I'd stopped to walk or like I'd stopped to walk or something. I was like, these people for all they know, I've just finished like a 27K run. I'm on a 15. Like they don't know what you're doing. I always used to just be like, I'm running really slow. For all they know, I'm training for a marathon. I'm on like a, I'm, I'm doing a half marathon. I'm, I'm on a 35K run. Like they literally don't know. Also, they don't care. When I see someone running, I'm not like, oh, they're running really fast. Oh, they're not doing this. I think as soon as you start running, you'll realize there's all different types of training. Someone might be on a pace run. Someone might be on like a really easy run. Someone might be on like, loads of people training different ways. Like they might be on a level one, like in terms of their heart rate, they might be on level two, level three, they might be doing pace runs. Like there's so many different types of way that people train. And I think once you realize that you feel way more comfortable because for all they know, you're on a 35K easy run. <laughs> Even if you are on like a 3K. Okay, I think I'm gonna answer like two more. A lot of people asking me about shin splints and like what i did go and get new trainers 100 percent. so such a jar and answer because it's an answer that costs like 150 quid and i kept putting off and kept putting off and i was like i need to wait till payday i can't afford it rah, rah, rah. and it literally I hate to say it fixed everything it did like obviously i still get them a little bit now also ibuprofen gel will be your absolute best friend load it on whack it on i was scared about running through them it got to a point where i couldn't i couldn't run through them like i could barely even like walk only for like a week 
they were really bad but i was scared to run through them because i didn't know if it was going to make it like really worse and if if it was possible for like damage to be done to them which sounds really extreme but i didn't i didn't know i've never i had done this before um but i went and seen a physio and she was like it's absolutely something you can run through obviously it feels like you can't because it's really sore but like don't worry about whacking ibuprofen gel on and like just getting your training done because nothing that bad will happen to them she was like i'd seen this guy before who could barely even walk and he still went around a marathon just dosed up so shin splints you need probably new trainers or probably ibuprofen gel you probably need some stronger calves so lots of calf raises i did lots and lots and lots that's like the thing my physio told me stretch them out properly and if they are really bad i would go and see a physio or some kind of sports therapist to or maybe you could google it to like massage it out essentially because it is so painful but so helpful annoying because again it's something that's going to cost you a bit of money but once you get into running and you fix all these niggly things that might come up then you're good to go like i went and got one physio session did cost me i think like 60 pound did trust me did not have the money for that but i was like i'm not already i'm not ready to give up on this goal of a half marathon for the sake of 60 pound so cut back on my shopping that month went and just like bit the bullet and just did it and it was so so much better a lot of people just say like how to move up i still find it really difficult i can't go further than this without walking i can't run further than this you need to go slow you've probably this is really relaxed as well this q a so apologies if you wanted some really really good advice you need to go slow and i mean slow crawl you literally should be able to have a conversation the whole way around. You shouldn't be sweating. You should just be chilling out. If you can do a 3K and you want to do a 5K, don't try and do the 5K at the same pace you can do the 3K. Strip it back. Go so much slower. Walk if you have to because it's about getting that distance in. When I started running, I said to my brother, like, I don't really get it. Like, people say, oh, like, it's okay if you need to walk, but then you haven't run 5K. Like, what's the point? If you're going to walk it, you haven't ran 5K. Like, I wouldn't go on a walk. I wouldn't go on a 5K and walk it and be like, oh, I've done 5K. I was an idiot. You absolutely can. And to be honest, you're probably going to have to at the beginning to expect, expect yourself to just get up and go for a 3K and then get up and be able to go for a 5K and then just go for a 7K. Like, you're probably going to need to walk and that is absolutely okay. And if you're not going to need to walk, you're just going to need to run slower. Like, I would rather you run the whole thing way slower than, like, sprint, walk, sprint, walk, sprint, walk. Like, you're not going to get anywhere if you do that. You're not going to build up any kind of endurance. You just need to go as slow as possible because again who are you running for you want to run run the 5k for you not for a pace to post on strava or a pace for your instagram or to tell people you can run 5k in this amount like i it was so humbling yesterday that it was i think that difficult because i kept saying to myself oh i don't care about time but i will be annoyed if it's over two and a half why for what like when i was running down running around and i really really needed a wee and i was at like 8k and i was like no i'm seriously like i really need a wee and I was like, you can't, you can't just keep going. I was like, why not? I've decided I don't care about a time. I just want to come here and do it. It's going to make this so much harder if I just don't go for a wee. And the wee is going to take me about 40 seconds. And it did take me 40 seconds. Leave all judgment at the door. Just slow down. Walk if you need to. Running is so enjoyable if you just kind of like leave the judgment at your door forget about the time and just like get outside in the fresh air like now i crave it i love it more than going to the gym i'm very 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 excited to get back in the gym and like train heavier because i wasn't because i was so scared of having doms for my runs but now that my runs aren't like an absolute i mean i'm literally about to book a second half marathon after this video for october but that's a different that's a different story so like up until august september i'm just gonna have fun with running i'm gonna do two a week i'm gonna do like a medium so like a five six hopefully like a six to eight probably and then i want to do one like 10 to up to 16 i'm gonna say to myself like from 10 to 15k i just want to do two a week um have fun with it who cares about pace if i want to walk a bit of it i can walk a bit of it like i don't really i'm excited to just enjoy it so yeah just enjoy it it's so i like i say i was enjoy it more than the gym sometimes because i just get to get up go outside and just run like kind of as far and as fast, sometimes not as fast, just like as comfortably as I can. I don't have to think about sets, I don't have to think about counting, I don't have to think about getting equipment and taking it over to there and waiting for, is someone on that machine, is someone on that machine, blah, 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 blah. You just get to go out and you get to go. And the only thing you maybe have to think about is route, which a lot of people asked me about routes. 
I've never done this, but on Strava, I'm pretty sure you can see routes that other people in your area do. So maybe have a look at that. Just go and I'm quite lucky because where I live, there are a lot of like known loops. Like maybe go out on a big walk and like suss out around you where you could maybe like loop. Or if you have a car, maybe you could go and drive out to a park or drive out to the beach. Or if you have, if you're on public transport, maybe you can get like the tram or a bus or a tube to like a nice park and so you know you can just like loop around that twice another thing people love doing if you're doing a 10k or a 5k like running out 5k and then running back 5k so you just like run on on the street until your watch or your strava or something to check and it's been 5k and then just like run back or again like you do it in time like just run out for 20 minutes and then just run back for 20 minutes like you don't have to track it all strava is a great tool but if you don't want to you don't need to i have recently turned off all pace in my ears and distance like i don't care i do not care and it made it so much more enjoyable and i was running like faster because you might run a seven minute and then a seven minute 22 and then a six minute 50 and sometimes when i would hear that seven minute 22 i'd instantly get disheartened and that's not what it's about so yeah i think that's all of my tips and knowledge i don't know I hope you've enjoyed this. A lot of people are asking about eating and stuff, but I don't know if I'm the best person to tell you for that. I eat porridge every single morning. So I'll either go like a few hours after my porridge or I go after whatever my lunch is. Like if I'm not doing a half marathon, like I tried to eat a lot of carbs the day before and I'm pretty sure that's what made me feel so sick. Like the last lap, half of the, half of the last lap, I literally just felt like I was gonna vomit. Like my stomach was just like this. And I think it was because I tested eating a lot of carbs the day before, which was probably just really silly. Like in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have done that because it made me feel really sick. And I couldn't even eat my porridge like the morning of the race properly because I just felt so sick. So nothing new on race day. If you want a carb load before your race, test it before your long run, training run and stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for all of the wonderful support and you guys just, like love my running journey and I love hearing about your guys' running journey and we're in this together. Beginner runners. I don't, I'm not sure if I can say beginner runners now because now I've run a, run a half marathon. I can't believe I've run a half marathon. The fucking hardest half marathon ever. And yeah, I walked up the hill the last two laps because I was like, fuck this. Running up the hill made the rest of the lap so hard. So out of breath. I was so hot. Like made it so much harder. My coach said to me, weeks and weeks and weeks ago she was like if there's a hill walk up it because she was like even some ultra marathoners will walk up a hill because it's not worth their energy running up it like if you're running a long distance it's not worth your energy running up that hill because you're going to be slower for the rest of it so she was like just walk up it so the last two laps i was like you know what fuck it and i just walked up it anyway 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 love you all a lot and i will see you on i might see you on thursday with a new video i might not I might have to miss Thursday's video because I don't love the vlog that I filmed, but we will see. Love you. Thanks so much for the support and I love hearing about your guys' friend journey.